Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the SFL today. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the SFL today. I am SFL Commissioner and play-by-play -play commentator Cameron Irvine, joined by Vancouver Legion owner and also play-by-play -play commentator. He's been a busy man today, Andy Hamilton. How you doing, Andy? Well, uh -oh. I guess I should probably unmute you. How you doing, Andy? Hey, Cam, I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. We're, we're a little behind schedule today because we've had some games that seem to go on forever today, did we not? Yeah, oh, well, and then the, the Vancouver uh, Alaska game lasted all of two minutes, so <laughs> it was a uh, up and down day for everyone. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite wild. Well, let's get uh, let's get it out of the way. Let's get the bad taste out of your mouth. Let's get Alaska and Vancouver out there. For those of you who missed it, very defensive game. Vancouver played the first SFO game uh, in Canada and uh, played to a packed house and. Kept Alaska under wraps, but just couldn't get the offense moving. And uh, Vancouver falls 23-7. to Andy, what did you see out of the game? Well, I thought it was a good game from both teams. You know, Mighty always comes prepared whenever he's uh, in a contest. He always does his homework um, as well as, you know, puts the best team he can on the field. And obviously we saw that today. Um, I don't know what's going on with the Canadian refs being so nice to our guests. Um, you know, <laughs> Y'all are so friendly up there. <laughs> yeah, apparently, even when the guy has one foot in bounds, we're going to call him out and review it and still put him out. So, um, you know, it, it happens. That's the, the way the AI works. It, it's finicky. You know, I, I am sure that we'll have our day in the sun here eventually. Um, you know, can't win them all. So congrats to Mighty. Um, they deserved it today. Yeah, I think the biggest difference in this game was Alaska after last week's horrific showing from Ron Cochran played turnover free ball and you could tell Andy that they were very methodical I don't think they threw one pass but beyond 20 yards today they they wanted to make sure that they did not turn the ball over yeah uh, Ron did a really good job of protecting the ball um, you know I think there was only really one pass that even could have been picked off um, for us and our defense so you know he, he did a really good job of protecting the ball their defense played pretty well as well um, overall, it was a really good effort from them. Um, the, the highlight for me, though, for them was 150 rushing yards. Um, you know, they didn't break off any huge runs that I can remember specifically, but over the course of the day, you know, those totals, you know, three, four, five, six yards, they add up. And so uh, Odom did his part, and that's really what got, got it to him for me. New tight end Vernal Bloodshine also got his first career touchdown in his first SFL game. That doesn't always happen uh, to get Vancouver on the board. But Vancouver falls short, 23-7. Alaska improves to 2-1. and one. Guess who the Storm have next week? Mexico City. I can already smell the game of the week aroma coming off of that one. Vancouver 0-3, but continuing to improve. Another team that is continuing to improve is the St. Louis Gladiators. They hosted the Atlanta Swarm in one of the early games today. 
And boy, did they give the Swarm a test. Something about Budweiser Stadium uh, just puts the Swarm in a bind. And ladies and gentlemen, I have to prepare you before you see this box score. This is going to be the strangest box score that you see today. Atlanta wins the game with five first downs. That's right. Five first downs. Uh, and St. Louis had almost 15 more minutes with the football. I don't think I've ever seen an SFO game that was that wonky. St. Louis actually outgained Atlanta 376 to 225 and had 14 more first downs. Andy, explain this one. Well, yeah, it, it looks to me like it was a uh, a running battle between Hollywood and Murr. Um, Murr, I, I could tell in the chat, I didn't get to watch the game because obviously I was uh, in Mexico right. at the time. Um, but from my understanding, it looked to me like Murr was a little more, um, you know, meticulous in his running. Every once in a while would break off a big one. And, you know, Hollywood was able to carry for two touchdowns, 106 yards, and broke it off. You know, the five first downs is, is the big – or, well, in this case, small number. But really, I, I think, you know, this was a game of big plays. Um, and, and Atlanta just had one more in them than St. Louis, from what I can see on the box score. Um, but I, I think the big shocker for me is not those five first downs, but it's the 250 passing yards at St. Louis. <laughs> I was just going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, clearly they've been uh, they've been doing their homework and making sure that the tight ends and the generic receivers are able to uh, get working for Ethan Alexander. And, uh, you know, I, I think this is a team that, that's, you know, was very close today and, and could very well just be a week away from their first win. Yeah, Atlanta now 3-0. and And I bet if we look back in their box scores and their scoring summaries, I would almost venture to say that every single one of their touchdowns has been 40-plus yards. Atlanta just figures out how to get two or three long passes to uh, – to, um, Chisholm or a long run from Hollywood or a big play out of their defense. They had a pick six last week uh, from Ajilani. They had a, a pick six this week from Nick Nitro. So uh, Atlanta, just they're just getting it done with the big plays. And St. Louis uh, definitely uh, looked improved out there. Colin LaMarche for – or uh, actually, I'm not sure – if that is his first, I think so. LaMarche, anyway, 14 tackles for Atlanta's defense and Hollywood racked up another 100-yard performance. Well, if you thought that box score was crazy, just wait until you see the greatest performance by a player in SFL history. I'm not even kidding, people. The Cleveland Stallions hosted the Carolina Skyhawks, and it was a punch ticket for Coma Kaleka into the SFL Hall of Fame. I have never... So Andy, this is just bonkers. You were you were coaching in Vancouver. You probably didn't see a ton of this game, but this stat line was so long that it took up two spaces on the box score. Coma Kaleka, 380 combined return yards for three return touchdowns. Two of them were kickoffs. One of them was a punt. He also had 10 tackles, two passes defended, a tackle for loss, two picks, and 29 interception yards I, I've never. I'm. I'm done. Unbelievable. And Cleveland wins 56 to 30. Right. Talk about taking over a game. I mean, the guy had been doing it two seasons ago, and last season, you know, he kind of was quiet for the year, and it was interesting to me because I thought, you know, well, it could be getting close to retirement age for Kaleka, and clearly today against Carolina, he was not that type of player. Um, that that's an incredible three return touchdowns. That's the he, first he time just, in SFL history, by the way, that a single player's had three kickoff returns in a game or three uh, and it'll, returns. It very scores. well, very well could be the last time you ever see it. Um, that, that is amazing. And the other thing that amazes me from this box score, 39 rush yards for Carolina, very uncharacteristic zero with a half. Yeah. Which, you know, is very uncharacteristic because with English, most of the time they run first and then they pass, um, with, with whether they're down or if they have to come back in a game or if, you know, like two weeks ago, if English gets hurt against Atlanta. Um, so it, very uncharacteristic for them um, to throw so much. Um, maybe we're trying to collect or uh, surprise Cleveland a little bit, but Kaleka read it the whole way, two picks, 29 interception yards, and Cleveland gets the win. Congrats to Mac on the, his first victory as a head coach. Just incredible. Yeah, I can't take away from the rest of the Stallions. Lorenzo Allen in his last game, uh, maybe in the SFL, a nine-season veteran because Cleveland has actually 
signed a new uh, star receiver that's going to hit the field next week in Allen's place. Had three catches, and all of them went for touchdowns. Uh, just an incredible game by two of the league's greats. Mack Wavy Jr. gets his first win as a head coach. Uh, Cleveland starts to turn it around, and this game started with a Kaleka kickoff return. How about a welcome back to Cleveland <laughs> with a score in the first 12 seconds? Right. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, and 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 I I agree with Heath McDaniel in the chat. It just looked like Carolina's offense just got in a panic mode. Kaleka put him behind the eight ball very early, and it seemed like Carolina just kind of went away from Johnny English. Just couldn't get him going. Uh, passes out in the flats were terrific, going out of bounds every which way. Cleveland was all over it, stopping the flats, stopping a deep ball. Uh, you know, Carolina racks up a lot of yards, but a lot of that was desperately trying to stay in the game. Sean Harrelson is not in the on, not uh, listed in this box score, but he had a very good game as well. So uh, let's jump to the game that uh, you called, Andy, and this one was uh, a bit of a snooze fest for basically the entire second half. Um, I can't believe what I've seen out of Mexico City, but if they're not number one in the power rankings by the end of this week, I don't I don't know why not. Uh, you got to see it firsthand, Andy. What would you think of them? Well, they were very impressive. Um, I thought Sioux Falls, you know, came out strong, and, and at the first – uh, by the first two touchdowns, it looked to me like this was going to be one that was going back and forth. Um, it was a 7-7 to ball game, and then I believe Mexico City added a field goal to make it 10-7. And, and then after that, they essentially just ran away with it. The um, only thing Sioux Falls added was two field goals to the uh, to the ticker after that. And, 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 you know, they really just dominated defensively was what uh, Mexico City did. The seven turnovers from Tyree, um, was really the biggest thing, and they almost had a uh, fumble that would have taken the first touchdown off the board. Well, they had two uh, fumbles, and if you remember, Tyree got hit uh, in the backfield. They recovered that yeah. one. I mean, this could have been yep. a nine turnover ball game, right? And, and that would have just improved their points off a turnover ratio by an incredible margin. Um, the average field position is also something crazy, and uh, Cabrera with the kick return touchdown yeah. didn't. didn't hurt either and the pick six Devin Cabrera yeah. was trying to one-up Kaleka but uh <laughs> well I guess since he played before Kaleka one-up Cabrera because at the time yeah, it looked go. like uh Devin Cabrera was going to have uh, the 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 big day today what's more shocking Andy St. Louis passes for 250 or Mexico City runs for more than they pass oh I, I think St. Louis I think um Ray Bentley is a name that you know, is going to become more household over the rest of the season. And I think it'll be interesting in the offseason to see what Ramos and Matt Wilson decide to do because I think if they decide to try and kick him back down to silver or bronze, he might be leaving Mexico City because with the way that he's running, I highly doubt that he's going to be uh, willing to take a smaller contract with those yards. Yeah, Bentley, uh, depending upon what Jay Calvin Kim does this week, could be at the top of the leaderboards when week three is all – uh, said and done, those 24 points off of Aztec or uh, Sioux Falls turnovers would have made the game 31-13 a little bit more respectable. And what's crazy is Sioux Falls forced seven turnovers last week and then turn around and th and have seven of their own today. Julian Tyree has been a mess with the interceptions. I think last season he led the league in picks, but he was uh, he was doing a lot more in the passing game, and and it was understandable, but. Yeah, Tyree's having a real rough go at it. Uh, last game before we send it out to Buffalo, where it's a absolutely beautiful 74 degrees and cloudy tonight. The Oklahoma City Renegades went to Mullinex Oil Field to take on the Dallas Roughnecks, the Red River rivalry. And I tell you what, uh, Shabazz Synergy looked like not a rookie anymore. Uh, Dallas shook off the rust of 0-2. Um, and actually avoided losing their fourth straight game at home. They beat the Renegades, but uh, it wasn't easy. 45-34, uh, Dallas did pull away in the second half, but then almost threw the game away. Um, but uh, still, Dallas in command for much of that game uh, that had a crazy first quarter, uh, 35 points in that first quarter. But there are the numbers. Andy, what stands out to you? Well, the 432 passing yards from Dallas obviously stands out to me. I think they did a good job of limiting Bruce Key to 126 yards. I mean, that that's a pretty small stat line for a guy of that age. I mean, um, stature of running back. He's a pretty great guy, uh, so to hold him to only 126 is, is good for Dallas. Um, 
you know, Synergy played very well. Nine incompletions through the whole day. Um, and it looks like some of those might have gone for interceptions. So six total touchdowns, that's incredible. Um, I'm sure Oklahoma City is going to go back to the drawing board. And, and, you know, at two and one, they're sitting in a good spot, especially in this tough Western Conference. Um, Dallas just played well today and in a game that they needed to to get their first win. Um, congrats to Steve. And Dallas and Oklahoma City, I think, will – this isn't the last we've seen of them. Both of them are going to come out stronger than they were today, which is – even scarier considering the scoreline there. Well, we know two things about Oklahoma City. The first thing that we know is that their offense, they've figured it out. They, right. they Their offense looks way better than it ever has. Red Feather is on point. He's been he's been very accurate, although he had a couple of picks today. One, a tremendous play by Troy LaShaw, just jumped a route. But, um, you know, Pete Bruschi's going, Bovine's going, and, uh, and this offense today put up 399 yards and 27 points. I think they'll take that all day. Renegades, Dallas did their homework, that's for sure, in this game, because the Renegades of the first two weeks, they weren't giving up anything through the air. And Dallas ex- basically exposed all of their weaknesses today. They, I mean, Shabazz Synergy, it was a clinic. He could not be stopped. 432 passing yards. It, I mean, it's not common that you see 400-yard games in the SFL. And that was, uh, that. that's, you know, Oklahoma City's really going to have to uh, figure that out moving forward. Me, to me, Andy, though, I think Dallas will take 56 rushing yards without a star running back any day of the week. That's a pretty good yeah. stat line for them. Yeah, that's a very good number. And, I mean, you mentioned the 432 yards. I, I think, you know, Steve and Dallas are one of maybe three or four teams that I would consider capable of doing that. So, you know, that that surprises me, and, and it's a huge number, but it's not anything that I, I – you know, if you said – we have a team who has 432 passing yards. Who do you think it was? Dallas would have been one of the first couple teams I listed. So, um, you know, a, a great effort from Steve, and clearly he did his homework, and at 0-2 you got to, you know. Um, Dallas, I think, will definitely be one of those teams that continues to do their homework and one that, you know, a, a lot of teams in the West are going to be scratching their head and trying to defend, especially after a day like this for Shabazz. All right, well, coming up next is the SFL's 500th game. Can you believe it, Andy? It's just it's just incredible when you think about it. Baltimore and Queen City meeting for the 10th time. Andy, what do you think about this matchup? Queen City looked great in Week 1, terrible in Week 2. Baltimore looked pretty good in Week 1 and pretty good in Week 2. Uh, the common uh, denominator is Tallahassee. Queen City got blown out by the pride, although it was on the road. And Baltimore um, just barely lost to the Pride, and they had them at home. So how do you see Baltimore-Queen City shaking out tonight? Right. I think this will be a good one um, in terms of how games usually go. Um, rarely do we see two undefeated teams um, playing where it's a very close game. Nine times out of ten, those are the ones that get out of hand, you know, it is a team that wasn't prepared to face another great team. Right. Um, but the games like these, the ones where, you know, each team has been great and each team has struggled a little bit, those are the ones that really start running up the score and it gets close at the end. Um, and, and, you know, both Kyle and TJ, the, or uh, not Kyle, excuse me. Eric. Uh, Eric, yeah. I was thinking about the running back. Kyle Walsh, he'll be great too. But uh, <laughs> both Eric and Tim, TJ know what they're doing. Um, and so I, I would not be surprised to see this one go down to the final frame. All right, well, Baltimore and Queen City is coming up next around the corner. Thank you, Andy, for being a part of the SFL today. Today, Yeah, of course, anytime. All righty. We'll, uh, we'll see you in the chat room, and uh, we'll see you all on the field at Con Pro Field in Buffalo. The 500th SFL game in league history is coming up next.
it into the open field. No one's going to touch him. Mark it up. Touchdown, Sioux Falls. 40, the 30, and he is gone to the house. Touchdown, Tallahassee. Tipped and picked off by Colin Douglas, who's going to take it back all the way. A pass caught, first down. What a move. They are Sim. Get out of here. The doctor is in for the touchdown. It's a beautiful 74 degree overcast evening in Buffalo, New York. The site of the Simulation Football League's 500th competition. Good evening. I'm your play by play commentator, Cameron Irvine. Tonight, Matt South and Sanzo Robinson. A.J. Caswell and Koa Kaleo, the Baltimore Crabs and the Queen City Corsairs, is next. Baltimore will kick off the Queen City. Baltimore Crabs, kick it! We're underway! From the goal line to the 23. And Jones Branch is hurt on the game's first play. So Branch gets hurt. That's not a good start for Queen City. Having a little bit of trouble with our screen here, but we'll get that all cleaned up. Welcome to Buffalo. We are ready for action here in Queen City. A.J. Caswell is the Corsair quarterback. And he will hand it off to Kyle Walsh. And Walsh will be brought down to the first play. Loss of two yards to bring up second down and 12. Eddie Gage on the tackle. Baltimore wearing alternative uh, jerseys, red helmets, white jerseys, black pants with the red numbers, gold stars down the side look gorgeous. Queen City in the all blacks, the white numbers and the bright green stripings on the socks, second and 12. After the two yard loss, Caswell will throw and A.J. Caswell will fire left side, caught by T.E. Haynes and he shoves down Mike Osai on the bench, a pickup of four yards to bring up a third down and four. Let's meet the rest of the Queen City Corsair offense. The receiving core, led by Haynes the third, number 86. Memphis Blue, the rookie receiver, wears number 87. Chris Bush, number 10, is the third wideout for Queen City. Third down and four, Caswell to throw. Caswell short, caught first down to the 34-35 yard line. That's Memphis Blue and a Queen City first down. The Baltimore Crabs defense is led by Eddie Gage at corner. Ray Cobain and Jeffrey Dezer also on the field for Baltimore. Aaron Lee is the free safety. Strong safety is... Uh, it may actually be Gage. I can't remember if he moved or not. Caswell's pass is incomplete. First miss throw of the game. Earling knocks it away. Second down and 10. Linebacking core for Baltimore. Includes Stephen Darrow, number 58. Riley Earling, number 54. And that rounds out the defensive stars for Baltimore. Second and 10. Eddie Gage racking up 9 million. The highest paid player on this defense. 
9.15 to go. It's second down and 10. Back to pass, and deep down the field. It's caught over the defense by T.E. Haynes down to the Baltimore 41-yard line for Queen City first down. What a throw from A.J. Caswell. That was pretty, and Queen City's off to a strong start, trying to get that bad taste out of their mouths. A 42-13 loss to Tallahassee last week to drop the defending champs to one and one. Baltimore's got eight in the box. Handoff goes to Walsh. Walsh gets some blocks around the left side, and he picks up five. Jones Branch, that's the third broken kneecap we've seen today. Eddie Gage makes that tackle. Eddie Gage is one of our players to watch tonight. Gage, nicknamed two scoops. Here are his career numbers. There's a lot of them. 527 tackles is sixth all time. 370 return yards is tied for fourth. Caswell on a second down and five. Deep down the field, it's picked off. Off the deflection, Baltimore to the 30 yard line. And the Crabs have the first turnover of the game. The man intercepting it is Stephen Coppin. And the pass, I believe, was deflected by Eddie Gage. Gage has made his presence known already tonight. Two scoops. Seventh in the league in picks with 25. And now over 500 tackles. He's our Baltimore spotlight player of the game. It's a first down for the Crabs. Matt South is on the field at the 30. Two backs and two receivers. South will drop the pass. A three-step drop. Fires short of the middle. Caught by Kendall Gilbert. Breaks through the tackle. Picks up seven. Second down and three. Coming up for Baltimore. Let's meet the Queen City Corsairs defense. In the secondary, Stezo Woods Jr., number 21. Greg Morrison, number 42. Defensive end, number 93, Colton May. Linebackers, number 44, Avery King. Number 54, Alex Cross. Koa Kaleo is also on the defensive line. Hand off Sanzo Robinson around the right side as a first down for Baltimore. To the Crab 41-yard line. The Queen City defense spotlights Avery King. King, who's been in the league for a few seasons, transferred over to Carolina, and they're calling him the heir. The heir to DJ McCoo, that is. He's third in the uh, tackles for loss this season and moving up the tackles for loss leaderboard all time in the SFL. Matt South, deep ball down the field, is knocked away by Greg Morrison. Picks up second down and 10. Morrison... Does a tremendous job down the field. Pass intended for Kendall Gilbert. And another look at Avery King. Again, all-time leaderboards. He's already 21st in the league in tackles for loss for his career. And he just keeps on doing it. Queen City uh, historically has had tremendous linebackers. DJ McCoo, Aquanta Shine, just to name a couple. Michael Spurgeon also in the Queen City secondary is south. Sidearm throws it to his sideline. That's Josh Packmeyer with the reception, and it's third down and five. Receiving core for Baltimore, Packmeyer, Mike Osai, and Kendall Gilbert. Sanzo Robinson is the running back. Matt South uh, side through free agency in La uh, from Los Angeles in the offseason, wears number 10. Had a perfect clean sheet last week in a victory over Carolina on the road. No picks for Mr. Matt South and got his first victory in black, white, red, and gold. Three receivers on a third down and five. The handoff goes to Robinson. Robinson sheds a tackler but will not get the first down. Queen City, uh, City was immediately all over that carry. And Baltimore will have to punt. And both teams are hitting hard early. Woods Jr. on that tackle. And we have our first punt of the evening. Crabs will kick it away. Fair catch called for by Memphis Blue at the 21-yard line. Uh, just to be clear, the return man that uh, injured his knee and is out for the game is not the usual Queen City return man. It must have just been a receiver playing special teams, so Queen City dodges that bullet. And uh, we'll not have to worry about what Carolina had to worry about earlier today when Johnny English... 
came into the game and returned kicks in a depth chart concern. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. A.J. Caswell will drop back the pass, and that one in tight coverage is knocked away. Riley Earling makes the play and brings up second down and 10 for Queen City. Earling in his first season as a star, he did play defensive end for the Crabs for a couple seasons. Now at linebacker, is getting $8 million, one of the highest paid players on this defense, has 15 tackles through his first two games of his rookie season. There's a look at the updated numbers of Caswell. 6.34 to go in the first quarter. Second and 10 in a scoreless ball game from Buffalo. Hand off to Kyle Walsh. And Walsh breaks off a tackle in the open field. One man to beat. And he will be dragged down at the Baltimore 44-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle by Jeffrey Dezer. But it's a first down for Queen City on Walsh's biggest run of the night. Kyle Walsh coming into the game, third in the league in rushing, 364 yards and three touchdowns coming into the week, I should say. Baltimore and Queen City both have had a hard time defending the run, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Back to pass, Caswell on a first down and 10, going deep down the middle. The pass is picked off at the 20-yard line, coming back 35-40, and a big hit at the 41-yard line by Kyle Walsh, but Caswell has thrown two interceptions, and that ball was picked off by Ray Cobain. Cobain, who we somehow missed in the introductions of Baltimore's defense, says, do not forget about me. And both defenses are playing hard ball here in the first quarter of game 500. Queen City coming into the night 14th against the run. They've given up 159 yards a game. Baltimore is 15th, giving up 174.5. Hand off to Robinson. Short side, Robinson will push ahead for four yards. And that'll bring up a second down and six. Make sure to visit simulationfl.net, the league's official website for box scores, stories, videos, and other content that you'll never find anywhere in another simulation football league. Second down and six, handoff to Robinson, and Robinson takes a shot from King. A pickup of another four yards. Third down and two coming up. Smash that like button if you so desire. Treat it well. Under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Third down and short out of the eye for Baltimore. South back to pass. He's in trouble quickly. Sack up the gut from Koa Kaleo. A loss of four. How about that from Koa Kaleo? Getting paid $9 million at goal defensive tackle this season. Coming into the game had just two assisted tackles and had not registered a solo tackle or a sack. Good to see Kaleo getting into the mix. And both of these teams playing very good defense here early. Two interceptions for Queen City, two punts for Baltimore from the 20. Blue takes a shot at the 24. Are you a player in the SFL? If you're new or just haven't taken the plunge yet, it's free to join our Discord community at simulationfl.net and hashtag be a star. Free agents can sign with a team as a star player this season through week eight. Don't miss out on starting your football career today. That pass is knocked away by Earling. Riley Earling having a busy day defending A.J. Caswell, who's wildly inaccurate so far. Caswell coming into the night was middle of the pack in completion percentage at 65%. 494 yards ranks uh, just 12th in the league. 
39 of 60, two touchdowns, two picks through two games. Second and 10, back to pass, Caswell again, and Caswell's pass caught over the defense, what a throw! Memphis Blue makes the play, that was precision passing from Caswell. And Memphis Blue's off to a hot start here tonight. I'm not sure how Caswell completed that pass. And with under four minutes to go, Queen City moving the ball down the field again. Three receivers all to the short side right with 3.45 to go in the first. Back to pass, Caswell. A short out route is complete. Four gain of seven yards. Second down and three for Queen City. As we've seen the Corsairs go a little bit away from Kyle Walsh here in the first quarter, which is really oddly surprising considering how Baltimore has struggled uh, against the run, against the pass. Baltimore has not been that good either. Giving up 286.5 yards per game, and that's 13th in the league. Queen City is middle of the pack against the pass. Three receivers, hand off Walsh. Walsh first down, pushing ahead to the Pirates' head at the 50. Riley Erling on the tackle, moves the chains. The Queen City running games over the years have been outstanding. Three different running backs have averaged over 180 yards in a season. Kyle Walsh currently sits at 182, which is just shy of what Marcus Allen Bose did last year. Parky Chole in season five averaged an incredible 238.8 yards per game. Walsh is free, and Walsh picks up eight. Gage with another tackle. That's his second. Brings up second and two. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Baltimore nothing, Queen City nothing. It's the 10th time these two teams have met. Baltimore has won five of the first nine meetings, but has lost two straight here at Con Pro Field. Two in the backfield. Walsh going to take the handoff. Walsh in some trouble, but got the first down. Able to break away from a tackle. A little bit slow to get up, but he's okay. Ray Cobain on the stop. And it's another Queen City first down as they approach scoring position. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Mahmoud Ajalani, DR Sim, Mighty RX, Marie Spurgeon, DeAndre Newell, I'm an effing problem. Shan Varner, Ramos Lynn, Mighty RX, Frank Gooden, and many others. Caswell's pass is caught on the short side by Chris Bush. Brings up second and six for Queen City. Both teams moving the ball pretty effectively and having a lot of success on first downs not putting themselves right. in negative positions. Elijah McCoy, 21, a newbie, is here tonight. Hello, Elijah, happy you're here. Yvonne Sanchez here as well. Hope everything is all right with you. Caswell steps up in a collapsing pocket, and that is picked off! That interception is by Aaron Lee. Three first quarter interceptions for Queen City, and I feel like we're caught in some sort of time portal because every time Queen City's had the ball, it's been a pick, and every time Baltimore's had the ball, it's ended in a punt. A scoreless first quarter as Baltimore's defense has forced three turnovers. Baltimore, so far this season, negative four in turnover differential. Coming into this game... The Crabs, through eight quarters of play, had not forced a turnover. Robinson gets hit hard and picks up only one. So first eight quarters of the season for the Crabs, they force no turnovers. And in the first quarter of tonight's game, they force three. For Queen City, they were plus three in the turnover department, tied for second place coming into the night, and had only turned the ball over twice. So definitely a flip of the script here in quarter number one in Buffalo. South back to pass. That ball is somehow caught. Are they calling that a catch? They are. I'm not sure about that. Third down and five. I don't think it's worth the challenge, though, for Queen City as it's just a pickup of four, although it would make a third down and nine in their own territory a little bit more challenging. Con Pro Fields 
near sellout crowd here on their feet. Channing defense, that's all we've had in the first quarter. Three receivers for South. South, a straight back uh, pocket, and it's caught at the 26 by Peckmeyer. Into traffic, South drops straight back into the pocket, and Peckmeyer somehow came away with a stellar catch. That's his second catch of the quarter. And Baltimore keeps the drive alive. Three receivers and split backs for Robinson. Linebacker showing a blitz, but he backs off and then comes up to make the tackle. That is rookie sensation Alex Cross, who made a splash on this network in the very early stages of season nine. A three-yard game for Robinson, and this will be likely the final play of the first quarter. Second down and seven. It is the final play of the first quarter. End of one. We are scoreless. And this is the SFL Network on YouTube. Start of the second quarter. That pass is caught by Pat Meyer again, moving the chains for a first down. Watching the SFL Network on YouTube. A scoreless game. The 500th game in SFL history. Matt South to pass. South short throw is complete. South is doing a really nice job tonight of spreading the ball around to all of his various weapons. That's a five-yard gain, and it brings up second and five. Primetime games left on the week three slate. You're not going to want to miss either one of them. Monday night with Chris Curtis on the call. It's the undefeated Tallahassee Pride and the undefeated Chicago Wildcats. It's a cat fight, officially. E.T. King and A.J. Barnes return to Florida after signing with Chicago uh, uh, in uh, separate free agency deals in the offseason. That's going to be a fun one. Tuesday night, it's the return of Greg Morris to Houston as the San Antonio Vaqueros go for their first win against the unbeaten and well-respected Houston Hyenas. Houston getting two wins at Sioux Falls and at Alaska. Two teams that were in the playoffs last year. Third down and one for Baltimore. Trying to keep the drive alive. South will throw. South short outside. That is a tougher throw than it looks, folks. That is a first down to Mike Osai. And Baltimore's in Queen City territory. This is a pass to the far side of Matt South over a couple of different defenders. The degree of difficulty on that pass, about an 8 out of 10. And this is Baltimore's best drive of the first half. Four receivers, three off the left side for South. Four-man rush, South quickly over the middle. Packmeyer to the 40, pickup of seven to bring up second down and three. This is the best I have seen Baltimore's pass offense in a long time. Very efficient. Gilbert, Osai, Packmeyer, Robinson, everyone involved. Yeah, DR Sims right. Houston beat Dallas in Sioux Falls. They were all in the playoffs. I formation for South. Six in a box. Robinson now takes a handoff. And uh, uh, Alex Cross, mind you, makes the stop, but good enough for a first down for Baltimore. 4.2 yards a carry for Sanzo Robinson, having another strong night. Robinson coming in sixth in the league in rushing yards with 308. Also has 14 receptions, 61 receiving yards. The 14 catches is fourth among running backs in the league, trailing just Kevin Clancy of Sioux Falls, Johnny English of Carolina, and T.E. Haynes of Queen City, but he doesn't count because he's a receiver and I'm reading the wrong thing. Matt South, wobbly pass, nearly intercepted as Michael Spurgeon gets in the way of that throw. Brings him second down and 10, more good defense out of this matchup. Michael Spurgeon has played on three teams in three seasons, 
but has racked up 106 tackles in his career. Seven interceptions, but already two with Queen City uh, this season, which is one off a career high for interceptions in a campaign. Second down and 10. Three receivers, two off the left side, back to pass south. South dumps it short, it's dropped. First drop of the game by either team. Brings up third down and 10. I would venture to say that Baltimore's in field goal range. Eric Walsh hit the game winner for the Crabs in a 34-31 overtime victory over Carolina. Last Monday night, coming off a short week. On the road once again, making a trip from south to north are the Crabs. Third down and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. South to throw. South steps up in the pocket, fires short over the middle. That'll get him in better field position, but Avery King makes the immediate stop on Packmeyer, who's heavily involved in the offense tonight, and it's fourth down and five. Eric Walsh out there for a 45-yard field goal. Packmeyer, 11 rece uh, receptions, 93 yards, and does not have a touchdown this season. 45-yard field goal for Baltimore is up. And good. Eric Walsh puts the Baltimore Crabs on the board. And it's 3-0. So Queen City's had the ball three times and has turned it over every single possession. Baltimore has had the ball three times with two punts and a field goal. And the Crabs have an early lead. Oh, Maurice Spurgeon, AK-44. That's a really... Oh, a good nickname. I was trying to think of nicknames as Blue returns it up to the 25-yard line. I settled on the heir because I'm thinking the heir to the throne, Avery King, and the heir to uh, the throne of DJ McCoo and Jake Legacy and all of those legend players um, in uh, Queen City. I think Avery King is going to be the next best sensation in bright green and black, but I like AK-44 too a lot. Empty backfield, five receivers, three down linemen, four Baltimore. Everybody spread out, and Caswell quickly goes to the sideline. That's T.E. Haynes in a pickup of four yards. Haynes has scored a touchdown in back-to-back -back games against Baltimore, but otherwise his stats very unimpressive in three meetings with the Crabs. Just 13 receptions for 55 yards in those three games as Haynes has been kept under wraps pretty tightly when the Crabs come to town. Four down linemen, and I would call that seven in the box. Split backs, hand off to Walsh. Up the middle, Walsh has a first down to the 39-yard line, and I would expect Queen City to do that a little bit more often as Walsh has been nothing but a spark to this offense here tonight that's getting shut out. Queen City averaging 32 and a half points per game coming in. That is seventh. Baltimore 35 and a half is sixth as the offenses have been ahead of the curve of the defenses so far in SFL season nine. Hand off Walsh and Walsh trucking ahead for two yards. Now 67 yards, 8.4 yards a carry. And if my math is correct, that's eight carries for Walsh here in the first half. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, at SimulationFL. And if your team already doesn't have a Twitter, uh, you should get one and get it on our website and promote your team to the general public. And that pass from Caswell is way overthrown. Not even worth a call. Third down and eight. He's probably lucky it was overthrown. He threw it into triple coverage. If you're on a team that already has a Twitter account, you should go follow them. SFL likes to be as social as possible. Third down and eight. That's what this is all about. One big happy community family. 6.05 to go in the first half. Queen City's offense struggling, especially Caswell. 
Back to pass, Caswell short and reaching for the first down was Haynes, but he won't get there. Fourth and one for Queen City, and we'll see what they do here. They've got one of the biggest bruising backs in the SFL, and he's averaging eight yards a carry. Will Queen City go for this? Now the offense is on the field, at least to start. Baltimore's got seven in the box. Neither team has a penalty in the first half, and Walsh is in the backfield. Ten on the play clock for the Corsairs. Going for a hard count and not feeling too confident in their offense tonight. The Corsairs will burn a timeout. If you missed it, the SFL today always gives you a recap of SFL action that you may have missed during a busy afternoon and early evening of action that we have here every week in the Simulation Football League. You can join me and Andy Hamilton on most weeks at 645 Central, 745 Eastern for that breakdown before the Sunday night football game of the week every week here on the SFL Network on YouTube. Well, Queen City will punt it away again, and we're still waiting for our first touchdown of the night. And from the 16-yard line, Packmeyer returns it up to the 21, smashes his fist on the turf in frustration that he couldn't turn that into more. Cloudy 74-degree night in Buffalo. It's a bit of a brisk breeze and an absolutely beautiful night for some summer football. Queen City has won four championships Four of the eight SFL championships. Baltimore has made the playoffs seven or six of their seven seasons. South, deep ball, caught by Gilbert. Over the top of the defense, and Morrison shoves Gilbert out of bounds. 60 yards on three catches for Kendall Gilbert, and it's the biggest play of the night for Baltimore's offense. A deep corner route for... Gilbert and Morrison lucky to move him to the white out of bounds. Let's go. Baltimore has been the better of the two teams in this half, but not a big lead to show for it. They're trying to add on to it here. You see 10 different Corsair players on the screen defensively, and they're all moving around. South, short throw to Osai. Side will pick up three. Second down and seven. Four and a half to go. There's a look at Woods Jr. Worked his way into a contract last year after playing as a non-star. South back to pass against a blitz. And South down the middle will complete the pass for a Gilbert touchdown. Queen City blitzes, and it just could not get there fast enough. And the Crabs have a touchdown. That was a complicated route for Kendall Gilbert as it took him a long time to get open. Running through a lot of the Queen City Corsair defense, and the Crabs have built a two-score lead here on the road. Extra point for Baltimore is good. Four seventeen to go in the first half. It's Baltimore 10, Queen City nothing here on the SFL Network. From the goal line, it's Blue. Blue will barely reach the 20.
Kendall Gilbert caught that last touchdown coming into the night. He leads the league in receiving yards with 329. Tied second with three touchdowns, now moves into first place with four. Although that could have changed today from all of the rest of the tremendous action around the league. Eight carries for 67 yards for Walsh before that carry. But he is stuffed. No gain on the play. We'll bring up second down and 10, and that is Abraham on the tackle. Queen City's got to get something moving. Four minutes to go in the first half, and they've got a goose egg. Kyle Walsh trying to change that, and Walsh is fought back by Aaron Lee. Nice job not giving up the first down and pushing Walsh back. That is no easy task. An eight-yard pickup brings up third down and two. Coming up, the 2K Sports Halftime Report. We'll have first half... Stats and highlights. Caswell should have just checked it down. That is a terrible read for A.J. Caswell, and it's fourth and two. Queen City's got a punt again. Actually, Stan corrected. Queen City, I don't believe, has punted. This is just their fourth possession. The previous possessions were all interceptions, and Queen City... Uh, actually, no, I was right the first time. They punted on the last drive, and it's fourth down for the Corsairs. See, that's why you shouldn't second-guess yourself. Folks. Pack Meyer to return the punt to the 35-yard line, and Pack Meyer up to the 38. That's where Baltimore will have it for a first down. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We are over 600 subscribers. Congrats to us. Now be a part of the push to get us to 700 as a subscriber. You're notified when our channel goes live, and you'll have access to over 1,000 videos seamlessly through the YouTube app. Our channel live streams Sundays at 3 and Sundays through Tuesdays at 7. Don't miss a minute of the action as Robinson picks up six yards but is pushed back nearly the line of scrimmage. Forward progress puts him at the 44. Baltimore has a golden opportunity here to really separate themselves from Queen City as the defending champs are in danger of going one and two, tying their Western Conference champion brethren, the Dallas Roughnecks, who got their first win of the day. Hand off to Robinson, and Robinson will push forward. A two-yard gain will bring up third and two. Coming up on the two-minute warning. Box scores will be up in no time. And all the content recapping week number three is on simulationfl.net. Third down and short for the Crabs. Back to pass south. South to the near side. Caught by Osai. Breaking a tackle. Osai to the Queen City 39-yard line. Shoved out of bounds with 2.03 on the clock. Matt South has 155 yards and a clean slate. And Baltimore has another first down. Crabs outsmarting Queen City at every turn. Here in the first half as the Corsairs have just had no pulse. We've reached the two-minute warning. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification right here on YouTube. You're home to the Simulation Football League. This is the SFL Network on YouTube. Two minutes to go, first down and 10 for the Crabs. South's out of the shotgun. Four-man rush for Queen City. South, oh, a little bit out. Too far ahead of Sanzo Robinson, but you got to love the effort from Sanzo. Diving for a potential three-yard pickup. Queen City has two timeouts. Crabs with all three. Still a lot of time left here in this first half. You never know what's going to happen in the last two minutes. <laughs> South will hand it off to Robinson. He fumbled it. Loose ball is picked up by who got it? Who got the fumble? 
Checking the replay, and it was Queen City who recovered the fumble. It was number 72 out there. A non-contract defensive lineman gives Queen City some new life as Robinson coughs it up unexpectedly. And now Baltimore jumps offside. Caswell trying to take advantage. Caught by the big fella inside midfield and down to the Queen City 38. Penalty will be declined. A first down for the champs. That is Sanzo's first fumble of the season. Earling and Lee eventually combine for the tackle. Robinson becomes just the second SFL running back so far this season to lose a fumble. Yvonne Sanchez is the only other man that's done it. First and 10 at the Crab 40 for Queen City. And you can start to feel the pulse of this stadium uh, finally here in the first half. Caswell's pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Really nice job by the Baltimore defensive front. That's Gonzaga, second and ten. Low key, how's it going? Sup. One forty-one to go in the first half. Empty backfield for Caswell. Five down lineman for Baltimore. Caswell's pass middle caught Haynes. Haynes to the Baltimore 22 yard line. And despite three picks, Queen City's in it. A look at Robinson who fumbled. Robinson coming into the night 1,777 yards in his career. Total yards, 13 touchdowns. First down and 10 for Queen City. Caswell all day to throw, and it should have been picked. Riley Earling with another pass deflection. As that ball was going for Haynes, and Dezer shows him the scoreboard. Earling, 15 tackles through the first two games, but he's doing a really nice job in the passing game. Helping Baltimore secondary, two receivers and two running backs with 106 to go in the first quarter, or first half, rather. Caswell to throw. Caswell looking long. Caswell's pass is picked off in the end zone by Desir. Four first half interceptions, and Queen City's got no points to show for it. One-on-one -on -one looking for Bush, and Bush kind of got bumped off his route there. Not enough for pass interference, but his, his route definitely was altered by Dezer. Baltimore with another defensive stand. South's pass. Oh, what a play by Osai. He turned around and caught it on his way down. Mike Osai moves the chains. That was fantastic. Out of the gun for South. 35 seconds and counting. Baltimore does not seem in any particular hurry as Robinson only picks up a yard. Morrison and Woods combine on the stop, and I think Baltimore is pretty content right now with how they've played through two quarters of football here. Hundred and fifteen point seven rating for South, who has not thrown an interception in the last six quarters. Three receivers, two in the backfield. South back to pass with five seconds to go. That pass is incomplete. It stops the clock with two seconds left. Third down and nine. Gilbert was the intended receiver. Queen.
Queen City has been absolutely anemic in the first half, but their defense has bent but not broken for most of the first two frames. Four receivers for Baltimore. Queen City needs to be careful. They don't give up a big play here. Going to the half down 10 would be a blessing. South will just check it down. That pass is picked off. Oh, picked off. And a brutal hit on the sideline. Which Baltimore is thankful. Mick Weimer with the interception. But if for not the tackle, that could have been a pick six. That is the end of the first half. Baltimore 10. Queen City, nothing. This is the SFL Network on YouTube. The 2K Sports Halftime Report is right now. Or not. Another one of those all-pro football halftime psych-outs. That's all right. There weren't many offensive highlights anyway. Crabs by 10. Baltimore gets the ball to start the second half. Hackmeyer to the 29. Uh, uh, First down, Baltimore. South, back to pass, off his back foot. Wonky looking throw, incomplete. Looking for some interference as Gilbert is charged with the drop. Ten fifty-one to go in the third. Baltimore a 10-0 lead in the league's 500th game. Back to pass is south. South down the middle. Pass is tipped away. That is... I get Chase Story in this new guy. Can Alex Cross knocking it away. I think Story wears 52. Cross wears 54. They're both rookies. And for some reason, it bothers me all the time. But at least I don't say Dijon Swain. Right, Andy? Right? <laughs> and he had a great call, good sport after Mexico City. Jeez, they just blew out Sioux Falls today. Three receivers off the left side. South steps up and fires a pass dropped. Augustine dropped one earlier that resulted in an interception. And Baltimore's offense is starting to get sloppy in the passing game. As South has not set his feet on a couple of third quarter throws. And Queen City could not have asked for a better start to this third quarter. Ah, C Stories 57. I don't even, I don't know. Hey, I got to throw shade at my other commentators. They do so much for me. Um, I just, I can't even express what, it, what a blessing it is to have Eric Vincent, Andy Hamilton, and Chris Curtis along for the ride here on the Simulation Football League Network. Blue return up to the 39-yard line. And speaking of the SFL Network, want to do what I do? If you're interested in becoming a play-by-play -play commentator or analyst for the SFL, the league has open tryouts all season long on our Rabbit broadcast. Please contact veteran broadcaster Andy Hamilton at Bengals1Fan for more information on Discord. First down and 10 for Queen City. Will they have fresh legs here in the third quarter? Walsh breaks a tackle, and Kyle Walsh picks up a solid seven yards. 
Second and three. Walsh averaging seven and a half yards per carry, but we just are not mentioning his name a whole bunch here tonight. He needs the rock. Coming into the game, Walsh fifth in the league, averaging seven yards a carry. Number one in the league is Jake Calvin Kim, 8.9. Kim also leads the league in rushing. Two backs in the backfield on the second down and three hand off to Walsh, left side, Walsh first down. Walsh with a vicious stiff arm. And down to the 37 yard line, picks up a first down for Queen City. Kyle Walsh trying his best to send that player to hell. That's Aaron Lee. Putting him in the dirt. Eddie Gage on the tackle. Gage was our Baltimore spotlight player of the night. Two scoops. Making it happen for a very long career. Sixth all-time in total tackles with 527. It's been his brethren in the secondary that have made all the key plays. Dezer, Lee have interceptions. Deep drop back. Caswell, that pass caught. First down. The 27-yard line, second and short officially or second and inches, depending upon how you want to say it. Let's go! Second and inches. Elijah McCoy, appreciate the compliments. Second down and short for Queen City. Trying to get on the board. Trying not to fall behind the eight ball in the Eastern Conference. Baltimore's going for their second straight victory. And off to Walsh. Walsh got a really nice kick block, and Kyle Walsh is in the red zone. Dessert and Lee combined for the stop, 107 yards on 13 carries. That was beautiful blocking. And the man on the outside was the fullback, making things happen. First down and 10 of the Crab 19, and this is the closest Queen City has been to scoring here this evening. Two backs, two receivers, hand off to Walsh, left side. And Walsh is wrapped up by a gang of crabs at the line of scrimmage. Earling involved on the assault, second and ten. Crabs in the alternate red helmets, white jerseys, red pants, or black pants with red numbers. Gold star trim, Queen City all black with the bright green striping on the socks. And pants. Hand off Walsh, left side again, and Walsh is inside the 10 as a first and goal down to the 7. More Kyle Walsh has equaled more success offensively for Queen City here in the third quarter. Baltimore has come to Buffalo a uh, few times in their history. September 1st, 2014, won a 36-34 game against the then New York Knights. Kyle Walsh is down to the two, second and goal. They then came back January 26, 2015 and beat the Knights in another close game, 38-34. Beat Queen City, or lost to Queen City, rather, here in this building, April 10th, 2016, 20 to 17. That was the Eastern Conference Final. It went to overtime. Also lost April 9th of last season, 45-24 to the Corsairs. Second and goal from the two. Hand off Walsh left side. Walsh is gonna take a stroll for a Queen City touchdown. Corsairs being shut out no more. And we got a ball game. <laughs> Kyle Walsh gets Queen City into the red zone, or into the end zone, <laughs> rather. Well, he got him into the red zone, too. Fourth touchdown of Walsh's rookie season. And the extra point for Queen City is good. Seven seventeen to go in the third quarter. Baltimore 10, Queen City 7. This is the SFL Network on YouTube.
pack fire to return. From the seven, pack fire 25, nearly got away from heavy traffic. Baltimore starts at the 29 yard line. Well, will this drive hold for the Crabs? Their first of the second half. Their last drive ended in an interception. Robinson does a nice job of stretching out the defense there. Picks up five, just 35 rushing yards, but it seems like a lot more tonight for Sanzo. Walsh is sitting on a buck 25 as we come to the halfway point of the third quarter. Next two nights, we've got more games in primetime. Chris Curtis has a battle of unbeatens tomorrow when the Chicago Wildcats travel to take on the Tallahassee Pride as E.T. King and A.J. Barnes return to Florida. Then Tuesday night, Greg Morris returns to Houston as Robinson gets a nice uh, gain up to the 47-yard line. Cross eventually makes the tackle. San Antonio is at Houston in San Antonio Corky's return to take on the team that got him this spot as he was co-owner and defensive coordinator in Houston. And we'll see if the Vaqueros have the chops to get their first win of the season on the road where Greg Morris used to call home. 10-7 Crabs back to pass south. South to Robinson. Robinson throws a defender to the ground but doesn't pick up anything. Maybe a half a yard, it's officially second and 10. A look at Avery King, our spotlight player for Queen City here tonight. Third in the league this season in tackles for loss and 21st all time. Haven't seen a ton of tackles for loss opportunities for King here tonight. But he's been a force, second and 10. Back to pass south. South over to Pat Meyer. Picks up four. Third and six coming up at the Corsair 49-yard line. SFL fans, are you interested in spreading the word about a truly revolutionary esports product? Help the SFL by joining our social media marketing team as South Pass is caught for a first down. Experienced social media candidates can turn this into a paid league staff position. Contact the league's commissioner, that's me, on Discord for more information. As we're now halfway through the third quarter, and it's a fresh set of downs for Baltimore protecting a three-point lead on the Corsair 43. Five minutes and counting here to go in the third. Back to pass, South. South in trouble. Head as he throw. Oh, they're calling it an incomplete pass. That looked like it could have been a fumble. That is shocking. Matt South gets hit from behind. And it's ruled a forward pass. There is no attempt to challenge. Second and ten for Baltimore. Where's my chat at? My chat's gone dead. Three receivers back to pass south. South's pass caught by Gilbert. Oh, what a move by Gilbert. Gilbert to the 23-yard line thanks to the spin cycle on the sideline. So the Crabs are thundering right back at Queen City as both teams have gone on lengthy drives here to start the second half. And that Queen City defender should be straight up embarrassed. Morrison eventually makes the tackle. First and 10 Corsairs at the, or Crabs rather, at the Queen City 23. Ball on the left hash with two receivers to our near side. Robinson will take the handoff. Robinson is smacked down at the 21. Thomas on the tackle, just a two yard gain. Queen City's done a much better job against the run tonight than they did against Tallahassee or St. Louis. South, 197, has a pick, but has a touchdown. 
trying to pad onto that QBR, south to throw. And south over to Robinson, almost stayed in bounds, but just couldn't quite make it. Actually lost two with that razzle-dazzle catch, and now it's third and long for Baltimore. Matt South coming into the ninth, fifth in the league with a 90.4 quarterback rating. Five touchdowns, four interceptions, and actually leads the league in passing yards. 750 coming in. Back to pass for South. South steps up, hit as he throw. Wobbly passes over the head and out of play for Josh Packmeyer, and Queen City gets a stop. Matt South took a shot. South, funny enough, 750 yards in his first two games. In each one of those games, he's had exactly 375 passing yards. Pretty bizarre. This is a 39-yard field goal for Eric Walsh. And that field goal is good from 39. So Baltimore goes up by six. And Queen City, for the first time in a long time, has a chance to take command and charge of this game. The SFL's 500th game here in Buffalo tonight, and the Crabs have a six-point advantage, and Memphis Blue has a nice return out to the 29. 331 to go in the third, and now Parker Shaw is hurt. We have seen injuries aplenty this week in the SFL. They were around last week, too, in a game between Vancouver and Oklahoma City. Both starting running backs got injured. Looked like Shaw got the better of the man he was going after on that play, but he ends up injured. Earlier today, Sioux Falls had players break their kneecaps on back-to-back -back plays. Their center and star wide receiver, Alistair Amir. So that was pretty wild. 3.31 to go in the third. Queen City has the ball down six. Back to pass, Caswell. Caswell far side to Haynes. And Haynes picks up eight. Haynes, six catches for 69 yards, and that is valuable because Haynes, in the last three games against Baltimore, had just 45 yards on, th or 55 yards, rather, on 13 receptions. So already more receiving yards in this game for Haynes than he had in his first three combined against Baltimore. Second down and two, 3.13 to go in the third. The Crabs have a six-point advantage in a hotly contested game here in Buffalo. Hand off to Walsh, and nobody blocked Eddie Gage. Gage blows the play up for no gain, and it's third and two, the man they call two scoops, making life difficult for Walsh. Third down and short. Queen City trying to keep their third quarter momentum. Caswell will throw. Caswell's pass is caught. Bush takes a heavy hit from Darrow over the middle, but Queen City's into Baltimore territory. Bush running an inside route here, and he gets blindsided. I can't believe he hung on to that ball. Nice play from the rookie. Bush making it happen, six million dollar silver man. Six five two twenty. Four receivers. Walsh right up the gut. He's got a lot of space. Haven't seen Walsh go inside too much tonight. Picks up a solid six. Back up to one thirty. He's been bottled up a little bit better here in the third frame. Two minutes to go in the third. Six in the box for Baltimore. 
Caswell will drop the pass, and Caswell's got all day to throw. In between three defenders, a laser to T.E. Haynes the third for another Corsair first down. This has been a completely different A.J. Caswell in the second half than in the first half. Four picks in the first half, but I'm not even sure that Caswell's thrown an incompletion here in the third quarter. First and 10 at the Crab 29-yard line. Defending champs are roaring back here. Four receivers back to pass. Caswell down the middle of the field. Caught by Bush down to the five-yard line. Bush for the first down. Caswell to Bush with another major connection down the field. Gage with another tackle. First and goal at the five. Eddie Gage coming into the night needed one solo tackle for 400 on his career, and he's got it. Caswell, end zone, sidearm pass is nearly intercepted. That was his first bad ball of the half, and Earling another deflection. Eddie Gage was also seven total tackles behind Tank Savage for fifth all time. Obviously, Savage played today too. So we'll see how those box scores compare by the end of the day. Second and goal for Queen City. Already thrown one interception in the end zone tonight. And Caswell will throw corner. Back corner, Bush! Touchdown, Queen City, and we're tied. A.J. Caswell with just one bad ball in this whole quarter, and it was Chris Bush on this drive that made the difference. With 44 seconds to go in the third, Queen City has an opportunity to take their first lead of the night. And the extra point is good. With two touchdowns in the third quarter, Queen City is up by a point in the 500th SFL game. This is the SFL Network on YouTube. Packmeyer from his six. And there's a flag on the play. That could put the Crabs deep in their own territory. Let's get the call. That's a clip, and that is not good for Baltimore. That's going to put the ball at the 12-yard line. Wow, that is not good starting field position for the Crabs. They're going to have a long field ahead of them. For everything SFL, visit the league's new website at simulationfl.net and explore the league's new partnership with Press Stats. With over 400 players in games in league history, now 500, the SFL tracks your legendary status with professional quality. Contact webmaster Liam Crowder as Robinson picks up six on Discord to find out how you can get your written works on our website. And the best way to do that is contribute to the power rankings. Over 30 votes in the power rankings this week, which was exceptional. Gave us a nice look at really how the league views all the teams around the SFL through two weeks. It's a long season. Second and fourth, the 18-yard line. Two backs and two receivers. Handoff goes to Robinson. Robinson's, uh, Robinson's got a lot of open field to the 26. Crabs have a first down. They have a long field ahead of them. We've got one more quarter left. We're in for a treat, no doubt. It's a one-point game. 
where else would you want to be? Buffalo, New York, game 500 here on the SFL Network on YouTube. South down the middle, caught by Maiko's side of the 44-yard line. Haven't seen a ton of Osai and Gilbert deep down the sideline, but we have seen a lot of really nice 15-yard routes up the middle of the field. Osai running a post and doing it like a pro. Baltimore had a... 10-0 lead before Queen City fought back. This is just the fourth change of possession in the second half. Three previous possessions have all ended up in scores for this squad as Gilbert cannot catch the short pass. Parker Shaw with a torn Achilles will not be back tonight. And through the powers of simulation medical healing, we will see him on the field next week. 10.28 to go in the fourth. The winner goes to 2-1. and one. The loser 1-2. and two. Early on in the Eastern Conference standings, Robinson took the contact like a man. That was incredible. He went right over to Alex Cross, and he said, you're next. Third and six. Big third down here for Baltimore. Again, Queen City sent the ball twice in the second half, scored touchdowns on both drives. Baltimore with a field goal on their first drive of the second half. Four receivers hand off Robinson on a third down, going nowhere. Cross puts him in the backfield. And Baltimore will have to rely on their defense that has not done much in the second half. Next week, the Baltimore Crabs will go to Sh or host Chicago. Ball is inside the 10. What a punt for Baltimore down to the one-yard line. And now Queen City is backed up deep. That's the first punt inside the 20 tonight. And a safety could put Baltimore in the lead. So Baltimore is at Chicago next week. Queen City goes to Atlanta. The Corsairs win here tonight. That is going to be a really fun one to watch at the Hive. Queen City's on the one, first and ten. Seven in the box for Baltimore showing a blitz. They're going to come with it, and Walsh is going to run away from it, and Walsh has a first down and more. A pickup of 21 yards for 151 on the night in a Queen City first down. Boy, the Crabs guessed wrong on that one. They blitzed off the left side and Walsh burned them from the right. Or from the left, rather. And if they would have run Walsh the other way, it'd be 15-14 right now. Queen City's got a first down and out of the shadow of their own goal line. Walsh over pursues. Uh, defense again, first and 10 at the 38. You could see Baltimore, anytime you see a Baltimore Crab defender ahead of the line of scrimmage stop and turn around, you know they've done something wrong. Back to back plays, Walsh has hurt him 36 yards on the ground on this drive for 166 for the game. Caswell back to pass all day. Dumps it off Walsh. Has a lot of space. Oh, Walsh just gets rid of a defender and Erling wraps him up. That was Dessert getting embarrassed. Second and four. Walsh is like a treadmill going too fast and you don't want to get on it because you're going to get thrown off. Under eight to go in the fourth, Walsh again. And, oh, Walsh, that's a rarity. He gets 
thrown down by Stephen Darrow. What a nice hit from Darrow. We talked about it in the first half, but it's worth stating again, this Queen City rushing attack for three of their nine seasons have averaged over 180 yards a game. You see Walsh's current season average there at the top of your screen. Third down and short, Caswell to pass. He's in some trouble. That pass late is caught by Haynes. In the nick of time, Caswell puts himself over 200 yards. And it's a Queen City first down. Caswell climbing the quarterback ranks. 3,319 yards coming into the night. 24 touchdowns, 28 picks. He needed just shy of 400 yards to pass Andrew Westelli, Baltimore's former quarterback. Hand off to Walsh. And he gets away for a six-yard pickup to the Crab 41-yard line. Queen City is inching into Crab territory. Caswell was 25th in the SFL in all-time passing yards. Shout out to E.T. King who got past 5,000 yards in his Oh, Walsh! Shut me up, silly! Eddie Gage serving up three scoops of nastiness. Off the line, unblocked. And just lays out big number 35. What was I saying? Third and nine, a loss of five yards. Gage firing up his troops, but Caswell converts the first down. Memphis blew to the crab 36, and the drive will continue. Six minutes to go. Queen City by one. Protecting a lead in what has been a tremendous 500th game. Caswell will throw over the middle, complete to the 30. That's blue again. As you look at the quarterback numbers, the only difference were those four first half interceptions. Otherwise, these guys would be just about even tonight. Second and four, 525 to go. No post-game show tonight. We're continuing to work on our infrastructure on the back end. 515 to go in the third, and Walsh is in trouble. Stopped in the backfield by Aaron Lee. And I have to say, Walsh has rushed for a lot of yards tonight. But Baltimore has been in the backfield quite a bit against uh, big number 35. Right. 4.50 to go in the fourth. Another crucial third down. Aaron Lee building on his 42 career tackles. Caswell middle again. That is overthrown. Blue was the intended target. It looked like he was pretty well covered. And this is going to be a pivotal 48-yard field goal for a non-contract kicker. Oh, yeah, Shan. E.T. King, 5,000 yards for his career. He'll be in action tomorrow night. Playing against his former team, the Tallahassee Pride. This is a 47-yard field goal for the non-contract kicker for Queen City. And that kick is on its way. And good! He just made it over the crossbar! What a kick. We're going to get a really nice view of this field goal here. From 47, got it. That's about as close as you can come to the crossbar without hitting it. And Queen City takes a four-point lead. 4.37 to go. And it's Baltimore who will be in possession. From the 12, Packmeyer, very short kick. You can definitely tell the wind is a factor here. Not in favor of Queen City because the Corsairs have been uh, in the third quarter 
We're getting those kickoffs to the six yard line. That one didn't even reach the 10. Baltimore will start on their 29 yard line. The Crabs locked in another close game. Three in a row to start the season for Baltimore. This is Queen City's first close battle of season nine. Pass caught by Gilbert. Turns the corner and Kendall Gilbert gets a first down to the 43 yard line. Avery King on the stop. Gilbert is over 100 yards. The league's top receiver so far this season. Avery King taking over for DJ McCoo, who leads the league all time in total tackles with 665. He retired with 449 or 499 solo tackles. It's crazy. Just needed one more for an even 500. South pass is caught to Gilbert. The pickup of five brings up second and five. Both teams playing like professionals, playing like champions, playing like postseason regulars here tonight. Baltimore hurrying up to the line just a bit. Four minutes to go, second down and five. Hand off to Robinson. Robinson fighting for the sticks. He won't get there. Michael Spurgeon, Alex Cross. Both get assists, and it's third and one at the Corsair 47. Crucial. Crabs are going to go with three receivers to the left of South. Packmeyer is isolated, bottom of your screen. South changing the play to a pass. South going deep middle, and the pass is incomplete. And somebody took a big pop. I think it was Osai from Morrison. Now it's a fourth down and one, and Baltimore has a decision to make. What are the Crabs going to do here? Oh, it looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. Fourth and one. Will the Crabs actually go for it? That would be gutsy. They're going to go for it. And Robinson has the first down to the 44-yard line. What a decision for Baltimore as Robinson's up to 74 yards. And the drive continues for Baltimore. Wow, that's clutch. There's still a lot of time left in this game. They could have pinned Queen City in their own territory, but instead the Crabs get it done on fourth. Three receivers, four down linemen, Queen City. There's a penalty marker down. That was a late flag. There may have been a hold on the play. Looked like Queen City's defensive lineman, that may have been Kaleo, who got dragged down forcefully. That's a hold. That is a big penalty for Baltimore. That puts it back at first and 20. Not good for Harrison. Two forty-nine left in the fourth. It's first and 20 now for Baltimore. Way outside of field goal range, although a field goal does nothing for them at this point. Queen City's done a good job of keeping everything in front of them. They have no star corners. Done well on Osai and Gilbert Deaton. Back to pass south. And that's a one-handed grab from Gilbert. Now he's just showing off. Run out of bounds. A gain of five. will bring up second down and 15. And for Baltimore, I would imagine this is all about getting to a third and manageable situation. Tallahassee, Chicago, Battle of Unbeatens tomorrow night with Chris Curtis. Houston and San Antonio, Battle of Texas, Tuesday night with Andy Hamilton. That's your wrap-up of the Week 3 slate here on the SFL Network. South is in trouble, somehow got away, and the pass is caught by Packmeyer. That was the best throw of the night from Matt South. South, cool and calm in the pocket. If that was me, I just would have gone to the fetal position. I don't know how he saw Packmeyer across the field. Third down and nine. Three receivers for South trying to work their way back from a first and 20 start. 
And that pass is caught by Gilbert, but he fell over. And inbounds. Ah, you wonder if Baltimore is going to go for it again, although fourth and seven is not fourth and one. But do they have enough time? They're trusting in their defense to stop Walsh. Going to try to pin Queen City deep. Maybe get a safety, could win it with a field goal. Queen City comes after it. This punt is going to bounce to the three. That is not a good kick, and it's going to roll into the end zone. So it's all on Baltimore's defense now. Queen City scored all of their 17 points in the second half. Can Baltimore get the stop? Walsh will be to the left of Caswell. Baltimore has three timeouts and the two-minute warning at their disposal. Walsh will take the handoff, and he picks up just three. Darrow on the tackle. That will take us to the two-minute warning, where Baltimore is trying to make one last stand. The home to the Simulation Football League. This is the SFL Network on YouTube. Right. 217 yards and four picks, but all of those picks in the first half. Caswell's been excellent in the second. Bush is to the top of the screen. Haynes, bottom of the screen. Two players in the backfield with three timeouts for Baltimore. Walsh is brought down by Erling in the backfield. Timeout, Crabs, it's third and nine. Baltimore giving themselves a shot. Third down and nine. Will Caswell decide to throw? 154 to go in the fourth, handoff to Walsh, and Erling stops him again! Wow, Riley Erling having probably the best game that he has had as a star player for Baltimore. Let's go. Fourth and eight, and Queen City has to punt. Erling, 15 tackles in his first two games. He's got at least eight tonight. At least. Maybe more. And the Corsairs will punt it away, and Baltimore will have a chance to win the game. Pack Meyer from his 43-yard line, and he is thrown backwards. Got to the 45 with forward progress. Once again, I'm your play-by-play -play commentator, Cameron Irvine. Also, SFL Commissioner. Are you a player in the SFL? If you're new or just haven't taken the plunge yet, it's free to join our Discord community at simulationfl.net and hashtag be a star. Free agents can sign with a team as a star player this season through week eight. Don't miss out on starting your football career today. Like Sanzo Robinson, who's into Queen City territory. A ton of user players on the field here tonight. Gilbert, Osai, Robinson, South. Really everybody, honestly. Both these teams pretty full. Baltimore has one timeout left. 138 on the clock. Second down and two. On the Queen City 46, the Crabs going for the upset. Two in the backfield with two receivers. Everyone's tied on the line. South back to pass. Throws a short route. Osai caught. Inbounds to the 41, it's a first and 10 Baltimore. Crabs can win the game with a touchdown under 90 seconds to go. South to throw. South down the middle of the field, caught again, Osai at the 23. 116 and counting. I formation for South. South will throw again. South to Robinson on the check down and that pass will go for nothing. Second and 10, 103 to go. Showing a blitz is Queen City. They back off and rush four. South middle, nearly intercepted. That would have been the ball game. 
That was a defensive lineman who dropped back in coverage. Star defensive end Colton May could have had his first career interception. Third and 10 at the 24. Four receivers. Who's going to win game 500? Five in a box for Queen City. Osai's bottom of the screen. Back to pass south. All kinds of time south. End zone. Knocked away. Fourth down. Johnson with the deflection. And this is the last chance for Baltimore. They need the 14-yard line. Con Pro is at full throat. 49 seconds left. Four wide for South. South will pass. South in trouble goes down. Woods Jr. on a blitz. A free safety blitz from Queen City. Puts South in the dirt. And the defending champions are going to win game, five, game 500. And for Woods Jr., it's the first sack of his career. What a critical play for Woods. Another user player in the SFL making a statement on the big stage. Queen City will go to 2-1 and one and will take on the undefeated Atlanta Swarm next week. Baltimore falls to 1-2 and two and will take on Chicago who will be coming off a short week and play tomorrow night against Tallahassee. What a game. Queen City very sluggish in the first half. Down 10-0 at the half but outscored Baltimore 17-3 in the second half. And Queen City evens this classic rivalry at five wins apiece in the 10th meeting between these two teams that have a combined 16 years of experience under their belt. And the Crabs lose their second game of this early season by four points or less. The clock hits zeros. Your final score, Baltimore 13, Queen City 17. The 2K Sports Post Game Show is next. In the end, Queen City outgames Baltimore just by a smidge and stays turnover free in the second half. Kyle Walsh finishes with 171 yards. Woods Jr., who had the game-winning sack, led all players with 10 solo tackles. Kaleo and Woods each recorded a sack. Matt South finishes with 277 yards and a touchdown. Caswell, 217 yards and a touchdown. Both the kickers did their job tonight. Matthews, 47-yarder in the fourth quarter, proved to be deadly to Baltimore, who needed a touchdown to win and couldn't get it. Gilbert finishes with 131 receiving yards and a score. Bush, 48 yards and a touchdown. I'm SFL play-by-play -play commentator Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League on the SFL Network on YouTube. We're back at it tomorrow night, 7 p.m. 8 Central, 8 Eastern. Chicago and Tallahassee, the cat fight in Florida. From our crew at Con Pro Field in Buffalo, New York, and our SFL headquarters in the Metroplex of Texas. I'm Cameron Irvine. Good night.